Hello, everyone. I'm Brainerd Carey, Director of Praxis Center, and I'm also the author of six books on professional development for artists. If any of you are interested in joining my courses and getting personal support from me and other experts, you can use the link below this video. So to begin with, today I want to discuss um, Matthew Barney and the artist statement. I think I'll do this in two parts because there's really a lot to say here, but I want to talk about a latest exhibition book and film of his briefly and how this model serves as a great artist statement that also drives sales. So, okay, the movie I saw was Redoubt. It recently premiered at Yale University Gallery, which is a beautiful museum. It's kind of a museum like MoMA. They have a massive collection. And in Matthew Barney's exhibit, what his exhibits tend to uh, comprise of is a film, a book, or a catalog, and, a ex and an exhibition. And they all work together. And I want to talk about how that happens because it's it's really kind of fascinating. He's obviously one of the best-selling artists in America. If you don't know his work, um, the work in, in some ways is kind of obscure, but he sells extremely well, always has. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about how that happens, how I believe that happens after seeing, I, I've seen his work for a while, but again, um, I saw his film Redoubt, which is a two-hour film. There's no dialogue in it. And there's an exhibition as well. Now, in the exhibition, which I walk through first, there's uh, some large-scale sculptures, which look like pieces of trees. Uh, and then there's a, a number of smaller works all over the wall, which are engravings on copper plates. And they're framed really nicely in copper frame. And the, the copper shine, the frame is shined. So what you see is a kind of a, a relief on the copper itself, a, a kind of an engraving in the copper. And as I looked around at the different engravings, you know, they were kind of interesting, but they also looked like I couldn't tell what they were. I couldn't tell whether uh, they were supposed to be figurative. They didn't really look figurative. They looked like maybe they were maps. Maybe they were uh, drawings of something abstract, but it, but it wasn't clear. But still, they were handsome looking. Then I went to see the film. The film was two hours long. And like all his films, there is no dialogue whatsoever. Yet it's a narrative film. It's not this completely experimental piece of filmmaking, but it is a narrative film. In this case, as the small brochure said, it was uh, about a hunt, about a mythological hunt. And uh, it was all shot in the United States, and it was beautifully filmed. And what, what, what took place briefly was the film shows uh, a hunter going out to, to, to hunt, and uh, the hunter was played by Matthew Barney, and also a series of women, uh, three women, who were also looked like they were hunting as well. They had... Um, guns and uh and you know they were sleeping in tents and were built this beautiful fire uh nothing extraordinary really but there were so there were these two the the, the characters were uh three women hunters uh, the the animals that we saw in the woods as well as matthew barney who was also a hunter and uh someone who was protecting the forest and the artist now what happened briefly is it's something that's, that's a little hard to decipher, and all of his films are like this. You watch the film, and you know because you have the little pamphlet in your hand that says this is about a mythological hunt and, and two particular gods in particular that are kind of personified here, uh, you have a sense of it. But not really. When you're watching it, you're not sure you know, what the three women really represent, which god, and when Matthew Barney is, uh, is also protecting the forest as a, as a hunter, in a sense, um, what does he represent? But what we see Matthew Barney doing in this silent film where um, there's a lot of dancers doing kind of what look like, uh, you know, dance moves, you know, dance-like um, movements, he's also the artist, right? He's, he's in a trailer and he unwraps a piece of... Um, uh, copper plate. He goes into the forest 
and he begins drawing on a copper plate with just a, um, a sharp point. And he um, begins scratching out what look like trees, a dense forest, or in one case, a, um, a lion in a tree or a cat of some kind, a cougar or something resting in a tree. In another, you know, out into the forest, he's, he's uh, you know, doing the same thing. He sets up an easel, he puts his little uh, copper plate on there. The copper plates aren't that big, they're maybe 16 by 16, and he scratches out another scene. And all the while, there's these, these three women coming through the forest that are cautious of him, occasionally shooting at him, hitting the copper plate with a bullet twice. Uh, and then we see uh, Matthew Barney go back to his studio, which again is a trailer in, uh, you know, somewhere near this, in this beautiful, what looks like a national park. And he uh, does this process of electroplating where he takes the copper plate, he dips it in an electrically charged solution, and, um, and it creates a, a chemical reaction on that plate. It makes his marks uh, deeper, it kind of engraves them deeper, and uh, gives it a certain amount of contrast. So, so what we see from the film, right, that we still don't quite understand is Two hours of beautiful scenery, um, an artist going into um, making making his art on on uh, copper plates, and that there's some kind of mythological thing going on. There's there's bullets being shot at him that hit the plate twice. Um, the film's over. We don't understand a lot more about what's going on, but now we go up into the exhibit. And he also made a book along with this too that talks all about the mythologies in the, in the movie. We go into the exhibit and what we see is all those copper plates. Now we understand what those copper plates are, right? They're scenes from a forest, you know, quite simply that were a little hard to decipher before. And the scenes from a forest are specific. Now we know they're scenes from the movie, the movie that we saw. So the scenes that we see are, are different kinds of things. They're, uh, again, like a, a cat in a tree, a kind of cougar in a tree or something, as well as um, what looks like a, a, a woman in a mask looking back at you. She was one of the mythological figures in the movie. So, okay, that was his recipe. But what's fascinating about it to me is the film essentially sells the work that we're looking at. Um, not directly at all. There's not even any dialogue. We don't even understand what the film is about, really, except loosely that it's about something mythological. If we really want to understand the film, we can read the book that he made, right, which goes into greater detail about the mythologies that he's tapping into, the stories that he's tapping into. But what's fascinating to me about this is the whole thing is kind of like the ultimate artist's statement because without having to go into what the work means, the film points to it. The book itself also points to it without spelling it out exactly. And when we see the work, now after seeing the film, we feel like an insider. We know what's happening roughly. This is about an artist on some kind of journey, some kind of mythological journey. And this is his latest product. So if we buy one of those copper plates that are very hard to see because again, they're all shined and cleaned. So there's no contrast in them at all. They're, they're, um, they're very kind of uh, like, it's like white on white only it's copper on copper, right? The color, uh, then we understand what's happening. So how could this be applied to your work, right? To me, it's kind of simple. You could also, no matter what your medium is, he's a sculptor, but in this case, he's also really drawing on a, on a tablet, on a copper plate, scratching into a copper plate. No matter what your medium is, if you made a video, a booklet, and then the medium, along with, you know, show, whatever it is, let's, doesn't matter whether you're a painter, sculptor, uh, installation artist, or, or working in another medium, the film you make, the short video, doesn't have to be as lush as Matthew Barney's, of course, but rather than it being a video about what your art means, or you even talking about your art, the video is some kind of an analogy that points to what the art is about, right? That's all. It gives a hint to what the art's about. And if you want to use Matthew Barney's model, 
in the video, you're actually making art sometimes and it weaves itself into a story. But the story isn't that clear. And you can draw from myths or other analogies, whatever you want to draw from. If you make a booklet, and I mean a small kind of copied booklet, Xerox booklet, to go along with it, that could also very inexpensively talk a little bit about what the exhibit is and, and some of the ideas or ideologies or mythologies behind your exhibit. And then the exhibit itself doesn't need an artist statement now. It already has a video, which is, again, you could, using his model, you could make a non-narrative video that says something about your work. And your booklet is also uh, a way of describing a little bit about what happened in the video, which gives a little more insight into what you're doing in this exhibit. And, um, and that's it. That's a way to use Matthew Barney's model to enhance your own show. So to step back from the whole thing a little bit, which, which I just thought was, was fascinating and I really wanted to share with you, is that Matthew Barney creates a model where uh, a, a film that's hard to understand but has him making art in it because it's, it's working with analogies and mythologies that aren't spelled out, as well as a book to go along with it, allows the viewer to understand the exhibit in a way they would not if they just walked into the exhibit and picked up a pamphlet gives them an inside sense of what's happening. And in a, in, a, in a very commercial sense, it helps sell it without without trying to be, you know, a salesman or salesy, however you want to describe it. And so again, in summary, this same method could be used for your art. No matter what your medium, if you're about to have an exhibit, whether the exhibit's in your home or alternative space or a gallery, if you made a video along with it that wasn't about you talking about your art, something non-narrative or narrative without dialogue, something that's you know kind of deep and interesting and, and sheds light on your work, may even have you making the work in it, um, but, it, but it, it, it lends some kind of idea to what you're doing behind the work, whether it's spiritual analogies or uh, you know ancient stories or mythologies of any kind analogies and then a small booklet that you make along with it very inexpensively copied booklet on a you know copy machine um, could also lend more um, understanding to the exhibit so that's my talk for today I hope you enjoy this talk um, again if you want to be part of Praxis Center you can use uh, the link below this to join otherwise I wish you well and um, wish you the best in making your art and your art practice. Thank you and have a wonderful day.